Hello. We have seen already how to identify a specific index within an array and extract its value. That is a very useful skill. But sometimes we want to edit individual or multiple values within an array. That is what this video is all about. To do this, we will take advantage of the assignment operator, looks like an equal sign, and apply it to a specific index within an array. When doing so, it will overwrite the value held in that index, but leave the rest of the array unchanged. Let's look at a couple examples. First, I begin with matrix Q defined as shown here. Now, to edit just the second row and first column, I use the array indexing shown here on the left of the assignment operator. On the right side, I enter the new value that I want to be written. You can see the results. Only that one slot was changed. The next example follows the same pattern. I identify the index on the left and declare the new value on the right. Then only that one index gets overwritten. It is important to keep in mind that the memory of the original Q matrix is lost. Only the latest version of Q is stored in the workspace. We can also change more than one value at a time. Here, we will see what happens when we assign a scalar to a subarray that spans more than one index. Starting with the same original matrix Q, we then enter the command shown here. Our first step is to identify the scope of the subarray. In this case, it is rows 1 and 2 in the first column. Then we replace all the values in these slots with the assigned scalar, 22. In this next example, we are changing the entire third row. Remember, the colon should be interpreted as all columns. So now you can see that the bottom contains all 33s. The general idea is when we are assigning a scalar to a larger subarray, then all of the chosen indices will take on the value of that scalar. We can also assign a specific matrix or vector to a subarray, as long as the sizes match up. This idea is clarified with examples. Again, we'll start with the same matrix Q. In the first example, we are selecting the first two rows and the first two columns, which is a two by two matrix. The matrix assigned to take its place must also be a 2 by 2 matrix. In this case it is, so the 1, 2, 3, 4 is filled in appropriately. Next, we are replacing the entire third row of matrix Q. This requires a row vector of length 3. The vector being passed in matches that size, so it is successfully entered. If we make a mistake and mismatch the sizes, we will get an error as demonstrated in this slide. In this statement, I am trying to use a 1 by 2 vector to replace a 1 by 3 subarray. Those sizes don't match up, so it cannot be done. One very nice feature of MATLAB is the specific error messages. Take a second to read this red text and notice how it pinpoints the problem exactly. Sometimes, we will want to assign values to an array in an index that doesn't exist yet. Let's call this appending values, or tacking them on the end. An example application is if you are running an experiment, and every time you get new data, you want to add it to a table of data. Let's see how this works in MATLAB with this example vector t. First, I create it as a column vector with the numbers 1 through 4. Clearly, this vector has four indices total. Next, I will add a fifth index, holding the value 99. Based on the previous slide, you may think this would give an error, but it does not. MATLAB extends the size of vector t to incorporate this new value. Next, I will add two more values into indices 6 and 7. Again, we see the vector extend. But normally, it is not convenient to keep track of how long a vector is. A more efficient technique is to take advantage of end. Here, I select the index as end plus 1. So then, the vector gets extended by one more index relative to the current length. Sometimes, we assign a value to an index that is far beyond the current size of an array. 
When this happens, MATLAB backfills zeros to accommodate. We start this example with B not existing. Then, after the command B parentheses 2 comma 3 equals 9, MATLAB wants to fill in that 9, but there is not a place for it yet. So, it fills in all these zeros to build a large enough matrix. The next command is B parentheses 3 comma 2 is equal to 7. The trouble is that a third row doesn't yet exist. So MATLAB inserts a third row of all zeros with enough columns to match the rest of the matrix. And then the 7 can be filled in to the correct index. Not many programming languages can handle this automatic adapting. We should be thankful for MATLAB's capabilities.